the next our next speaker will be Natalia Zinaeva Pankowska. She's also actually the main organizer of this webinar. She's a former Euro to Peace Fellow from Tula as well, and she's from she's from Poland, lives in Poland. She's a sociologist, a member of the International Association of Genocide Scholars. She is doing her PhD about uh, Holocaust denial and memory and identity in Eastern Europe. She has worked at and traveled to memory sites and museums about genocide as well as in Poland, as for example, also in Cambodia. But she's not only working with the past, but also with the present, for example, by doing uh, uh, research about uh, monitoring racism and xenophobia, such as working at the Never Again Association. So Natalia, with the Never Again Association and its partners in European countries, you have monitored the situation of xenophobia recently in the recent month during the um, pan pandemic in Poland and in Europe. And can you please tell us a little bit about the results of your monitoring? Uh, thank you very much, Eva, for this nice introduction. And I'm actually very thankful to you uh, for your contribution to the development of a European chapter of a Rotary Peace Alumni Association. So it's our common uh, task and I'm very thankful to you. And I'm very excited to take part, uh, to participate in this panel discussion with excellent speakers and to be participants, uh, fellows from all over the world. So I would like to uh, discuss with, with you how we can together, uh, what we can organize, how we can organize solidarity to combat racism and xenophobia today. And we know that xenophobia and hate are increasing in the world. Uh, it's increasing everywhere uh, in Europe, in the United United States, in uh, Asia, in Australia, and um, uh, now I'd like to use my slides. So uh, xenophobia is increasing everywhere in the world. The, the pandemic has started with anti-Asian racism and anti-Chinese uh, racism, xenophobia. Uh, but as we can see, it's not a problem only of uh, one group. It's not a problem of a particular group, certain group, but it is a problem of a society. And in this society, every group, it concerns every group in the society, depending also on the historical, social and political context. Amongst the victims, we have refugees, migrants, uh, ethnic, religious, national minorities, LGBT and many other groups, especially those groups which historically uh, have been mar marginalized in our societies, such as Roma and Jews in Eastern Europe. Uh, the hate uh, has been spread by uh, traditionally far right groups, uh, but today also by mainstream actors, including media, explicitly or implicitly, uh, often by using allusions or over lexicalization when they mention the name of a certain group many times in a negative context, but without explicitly blaming it. And here we also can observe uh, dangerous attempts to divide people into us and them. And all stereotypes which we have now um, are not newly created. Uh, all stereotypes are not newly created. And it is um, historically, they were historically constructed and used for many centuries before. For example, anti Semitism or hatred against Jews. Uh, here we can see all historical elements of conspiracy theories, and we can when we cannot see the an enemy we, when the enemy is invisible, such as a virus. Um, the conspiracy theories are easily being created. Uh, going back to history, for example, during the Black Plague in the Middle Ages, Jews were accused of intentionally spreading the disease by poisoning wells in Europe and they were persecuted and expelled from towns because of this. They were also accused of blood libel or ritual murder of Christian kids to use their blood for ritual purposes. And actually, how did Jews arrive to Poland? They arrived, they started arriving to Poland and to Eastern Europe in the Middle Ages when they were expelled from Western Europe, where they were persecuted in Western Europe because of a Black Plague, when they were accused of poisoning wells and of um, uh, spreading the disease. So they started to come to settle uh, in Poland and in Eastern Europe, and it was a safe place for them at that time. 
So, uh, so we need also to think about history and think how we can um, put this, um, our contemporary situation in this uh, historical context. And uh, during the Second World War, uh, the Nazis used propaganda to scapegoat Jews who allegedly spread typhus and lies. So it's just, there were many, many such uh, examples. So we can see how the mechanism of transferring the guilt to others, to minorities, uh, functions, and how we can apply this historical framework to the current situation. For example, we can go some, somewhere outside of Europe. Uh, let's take India as an example, where the biggest religious minority Muslims are accused of spreading the pandemic and attacked on this ground, and the hatred is also supported and spread by the media. Uh, we can also apply this historical frame to Roma people in Europe, a disadvantaged and marginalized group uh, who have been accused of spreading the diseases throughout history and also today during uh, the COVID-19. Uh, it happened, for example, recently in Slovakia and it also happened in Romania and it happened in Bulgaria. So the same mechanism of xenophobia and exclusion is applied to refugees also across the world. Uh, for example, Rohingya refugees. In many cases, the refugees suffer also from the lack of medical care and they live in extremely difficult conditions with no access to protective measure, uh, basic services such as water, uh, no information. So we can also think about refugees in this, uh, in this context. Uh, According to the recent results of the monitoring of the Never Again Association of Media and Social Media, uh, which is actually a big document of almost of 40 pages, uh, for, there is almost no ethnic or religious group left that has not been blamed for the pandemic. And in the case of Poland, for example, all traditional historical dispute, uh, disputes between various national groups reappeared again. For example, Germans and Ukrainians, and we all know that Polish-German and Polish-Ukrainian relations historically were difficult and there were conflicts in the past. So I'd like just to give you two examples from our monitoring, from our brown book. Uh, an exa one example about Germany and another, another example is about Ukrainians. Uh, a post on social media says, Germany should stop lying to Europe about coronavirus. Every poll who does who goes there and comes back is infected with the German virus. Everyone says that they are the main source of the virus. Another example is about Ukrainians. Uh, and it is an example of discrimination. When the young man tried to enter the store, uh, the security guard asked him if he was Polish or Ukrainian. And when he replied that he was Ukrainian, he was told that he couldn't go inside the shop because of the coronavirus. So, and there are many, many uh, such examples which we can also uh, present and we publish uh, our monitoring. Uh, you can visit and uh, find it on our website online. Um, so, uh, uh, so I also you can you can see a website you can also visit it and you can see more information and find it there. And now we have heard very many examples about uh, how hatred develops or how hatred is tradited for a long time. Can you also have or tell us some positive recommendations about how to go about it, how to deal with the problem now and after the pandemic? Uh, first, uh, first of all, what we need uh, for this moment is global solidarity and global stance against racism and xenophobia. Of course, awareness raising campaigns are important. Uh, hate is mostly directed against marginalized, vulnerable groups. Uh, population should be educated about existing stereotypes against such groups, uh, about anti-Semitism, about Islamophobia, uh, anti-African uh, anti racism, uh, uh, and related to them stereotypes. So awareness raising campaigns are important. And uh, we can use different methods, tactics uh, to, to deal with uh, racism and xenophobia. And for example, here in Poland, uh, in, uh, with my organization, we use 
Uh, we try to use different cultural resources, such as music, art, and sport to engage young people, to engage them to be more involved uh, to, um, uh, against racism. And uh, we are going also to develop a topic uh, during the Peace Incubator Project uh, uh, in Geneva this November. Uh, the topic how we can use cultural resources uh, for peace. And uh, we should pay more attention to projects online. And digitalizations help us to increase distribution of cultural resources to a broader audience. So it's very important also to, to use different, uh, different opportunities which we have today. Uh, we can have also transborder projects. And it's very important in the context of Poland today, in the context of uh, the rest of Europe. Uh, uh, for example, we can have Ukrainian, Polish or Polish German projects, but it also can be done in other regions of the world to reduce hate and promote positive aspects of common history and peace. Thank you very much, Natalia.